Let me show you how to do a bulk import of issues using a CSV file. The technique, while scary at first, is actually quite simple once you know how to do it. So luckily for you, you got a like on this video, you subscribe to this channel, and if you have any questions, comments, or concerns about anything that I'm doing in this video, let me know in the comment section down below. Importing is not that bad. I promise I'm gonna walk you through all the steps that you need to know in order to do the import. Now, before we even get started with any of this, the very first thing that you need to do is share this video with everybody that you know, your team, your coworkers, your admins, your boss, anybody who you know that could benefit from this video. Assuming you've done that, the actual first thing that you want to do with respect to importing into Jira is you want to prepare a file. You don't just want to come at this very blindly because having the right file and investing time in this step is going to make the rest of the process so much easier. But most folks come in with a very, very bad file, which leads to problems down the road. So I'm going to show you how to prepare your CSV file because that's going to be the best way to do the import. So open up your favorite Excel, Numbers, Google Sheets, whatever you're using to create some sort of a spreadsheet, but you're going to want a blank canvas. And the first thing we're going to want to set up is the header. Now the header, row one, is going to be very critical because that first row is going to call out the columns which are going to be mapped to fields inside of Jira. Now the names of the columns and the name of the field don't need to match up, but trust me when I tell you it is a thousand times easier when both of these are the same name because in the heat of the moment, in the heat of doing the import, if these things aren't aligned letter by letter, word for word, trust me, it will confuse you. It has bitten me in the butt more times than I care to count and even worse is if you're preparing a file and you're giving it to a Jira administrator to do the import for you, you're assuming that they know what the mapping is. And so that's just even more bad news bears. So make sure that the name of the column that header we're about to put in matches with the field. Again, it doesn't have to, but trust me when I'm telling you, it will make your life infinitely easier if they're the same. To actually do this import, to actually prepare this file, it's actually quite simple. And we're going to do it easy. We're going to do a round of videos because there's a bunch of other more complex things we can do, such as importing subtasks, doing linking, and then doing bulk updates and stuff like that. So I'm not going to touch any of that for now. I'm just going to show you how to do a very simple import of a couple of issues. So the first thing you want up here is you want the summary. This one's going to be critical because this is the title of the issue. So we don't have the key yet. Remember, we're importing them, so they don't exist inside of Jira. So we don't need the issue key, but we do need a title. We need to give this issue some sort of identification of what it should be, and that's going to be that summary, also known as that title. So make sure you, you start off with summary. Next up, everything at this point is pretty much optional. You don't need literally anything else. You can do this however you want though, right? Like, so there's so many different permutations and so many different ways to do this, but the summary is going to be your non-negotiable. Most often you will also include something like the description. You can include things like the issue type, and you can even include things like the status. Those would probably be the bare minimum essentials that I would urge you to consider because in most cases, I've done hundreds and hundreds of these imports. In most cases, you're not just importing stories. You're importing epics and you're importing tasks and stories and bugs and subtasks. So calling out the issue type is going to be really, really critical. Calling out the description, optional, but it's always good to have some information on top of the title. And so if you're only creating issues with no description, it's just work you're going to have to do later because most of the time, just having a title is not very beneficial inside of an issue and you're going to want to add some description. So those are the minimum. Now status. Let me talk about status for a second here because I do want to caution you with respect to the status. When you include status, this puts you in two different camps that I want to address. Camp number one, anybody can do an import in Jira up to about 250 issues. I think is the last number I checked. But as long as you don't care about the status and as long as you don't care about your issue types, and you're just bringing in your summary and your description, anybody can just do a very basic up to 250 issues at a time 
import. If you do care about the status, then you have to promote yourself to only being able to do this import as a Jira administrator because we have to do it using the technique I'm going to show you. But that's the item number one that I want to tell you. So basically, if you don't care about status, you can do the import as long as you're doing 250 issues or less. If status is very, very critical for you and you're not a Jira administrator, then you're pretty much out of luck. You have to have a Jira administrator do the import for you. Now, the second thing I want to talk about with respect to status is it is critical. The most important thing, if you're not paying attention, this is the part where I want you to pause everything else and pay attention to this. Because when you do the import, the workflow for that issue is very critical for you to know. If you are doing an import and the workflow for a specific issue doesn't exist, let's just say that you use a Kanban style board and you have the status as a backlog selected for development and progress and done, but you use the status of to do. So if I were to write to do here, this will not import correctly. That row will basically basically be nulled out and Jira is going to throw it away and not import it. The statuses must match with what's inside. Now, not everything is lost here. You could give it the bad status and in the mapping, we can fix it. You're at the risk that your Jira administrator is going to catch that or know about that. Most of the time, there's so many workflows, so many permutations of everything that it's kind of hard to keep it all together. So when you're preparing this file, do your homework and double check. Go to your existing issues for that issue type and double check your statuses and make sure that they're all within the realm of possibility. Because if it's not, that import is going to be very, very bad because it's going to, you're still going to import and going to go through the process. But the numbers of how many are in your Excel file versus how many went into Jira, they're not going to match because of that status. So that is one thing that I wanted to call out because it has been me so many times in the past. All right. So coming back over here, we're just going to go like this is a story one. And in my description, I'm just going to expand these columns just to make it a little bit cleaner, easier to read. This is my description. And this is literally all you got to do is you just got to basically um, call these out and just make a bunch of these, right? So I'll make stories eight. I'll add all my descriptions here. I'll add my stories over here. And then I'll bring my statuses this way. Now, you don't have to bring in the status. If you don't bring in a status, it's just going to default to the very first status in your workflow. So whatever that is. But if you do automatically already want to put some into in progress, some of them that are done, then you're going to want to do it this way. All right. Now, this is the bare minimum. This is just like just to get you started. Any field in Jira can be used in here. And I'm going to caution you with dates because dates are very tricky to import. Assignees are very tricky to import and linking are very tricky to import. So because of that, I'm going to do three separate videos on identifying all of those three environments or those three scenarios, because just doing any of those three just makes this exponentially harder. But I wanted to do a very beginner's like, here's how you just get the bare bones, the minimum into Jira, because it's actually not that bad as long as you are not doing assignees, dates, or linking. So once you have this file, once you have this kind of set up this way, we have eight unique stories, some descriptions, the issue type and the status, and then you can feel free to add other columns like your components, your fixed versions, uh, priorities, whatever you want, you can add them. Because if you don't, if you omit them, whatever the defaults are in your Jira project, that's what's going to be created. So, but now that you have this, we're going to go to the step number two, which is the second most critical step, which is, I just cannot say this. If you, you hit uh, file save and you just, you just accept this as like a Jira import demo one and I hit save, that's not going to work because that is saving as an Excel file type. We don't want an Excel file type. So make sure when you're hitting save, you actually change your file format to a CSV UTF-8. This is going to give you that comma delimitator file, which is what Jira is going to accept. So go ahead and click save once you have that. And then just remember where you left it. You can close this off because you won't need it anymore. And now we can go into Jira. So you remember at the beginning, I said, if you are not importing the status and if you're just importing just the titles and the descriptions and whatnot, you can click create and click on this import issues and then it'll get you started. But we're not going to do that because we are very interested in the status and at least in this example, I'm going to show you 
the way that the JIRA administrators do it because that's really the way um, that you need to know. So in order to get to that screen, rather than hitting that create button, we're going to swing our way over here to the gear and we're going to go to system. Once we're in system, on the left hand side, we're going to look for external system import. From there, we're going to select CSV. And now we're going to pick our file. So now we got to go to choose file and we're going to find our file that we just created. So once you selected your file, click open. And you don't have to worry about this because this is usually always set up correctly already, as long as you save that as a CSV and it was indeed a UTF-8. And we are doing a comma delimited file, so commas are the delimiter. Click next. In this next step, you do need to now know or have some insight as to where these issues are going. You just can't randomly import stuff into Jira. They need to have a home. And so you're going to have to select or at least know which project these issues are going to have to be imported into. So I'm just going to randomly pick my Thanksgiving dinner. Okay. Once I do that, the email suffix for new users, this one here will cover in a later video, but just know that when you are importing Jira issues, you have the option to also import new users, which can be not tricky, but it could cause some accidental increase in bills because now all of a sudden you've added a bunch of users that are going to start inflating your licenses. So you want to be very, very careful with how you're dealing with this. The other tricky part that I'll give you kind of a teaser for a future video is the email is the best way to import these users because if you just put their first name and last name or just their first name or any variation of that and not their full email, then Jira is not going to be able to map that email with their email account that is registered for their Atlassian ID. And it's just going to cause all kinds of havoc. And then on the date format here, this is critical. We're going to spend a, again, a dedicated video just on this date format because that date format has to align with the format that you did inside of your preparation of the file. If they are off by one letter, the date won't import correctly. So this is why I'm going to create a dedicated video after so I can show you how to kind of explain and, and how to break down how the format should be for maximum success. But because we're not doing dates in this video, I'm just gonna click next. One thing that I should do here before I get too far, I randomly picked a project, right? So I'm gonna eat my own dog food here and I'm actually gonna open up my project, my Thanksgiving one, and I'm just gonna double check that an issue, specifically a story, has the status of to do. And you can see that it does. Because if it didn't, then I would have a problem and I would be very hypocritical because none of, none of the, the steps or cautions that I gave you a few minutes ago would, would apply, right? And basically my import would not succeed. So once you have that though, once you double check that, yes, the statuses are do map with the one that's in your file, it's time for the next step. So now I don't, don't ask me why I do this, but I need to go look up some official documentation but this is just the way I always do it, and this works almost 99.99% of the time. So just do as I say, okay? So description, under Jira field, you're gonna type in description. Now this is going to map to the description field. You gotta click this checkbox. Why? I don't know, but it's very critical that you click that checkbox. Issue type, here, we're, again, we're just selecting them and we're mapping them. We're gonna go to status. Now look at what happens when I select status. It's already pre-selected, which is why I always select the other ones. And then watch what happens when I give it a summary. Once I give it a summary, now the next is enabled. And in fact, had summary been the first thing that I would have mapped, that next should have been enabled automatically. Now we are going to be talking about attachments here, custom fields and subtasks in a later video. So make sure you like this video, make sure you subscribe to the channel so that you don't miss out when I do drop those videos. But once you've done all your mapping, all your checkboxes selected, and your columns, the headers in your CSV file are mapped to that field inside of Jira, it's time to click next. Once you click next here, this is where the fun part starts. You now have to essentially double check everything that got analyzed. Now this part here for me, for this example, looks easy because I'm importing like five things, but in yours, you're probably going to import a hundred, few hundred different things. So you're going to be scrolling for a while. So it's, it's really easy to make a mistake here because if you're just scrolling through everything, you, you don't necessarily double check to make sure that the file got imported correctly or that it got read or processed by, by Jira correctly. So make sure you take some time here, take a quick time out, double check everything, double check your statuses, double check your issue types, because sometimes your import 
will include issue types that just don't exist in your environment. And so if that doesn't line up, those are going to be thrown out. The same thing with your statuses. If the statuses aren't lining up, then they're going to be thrown out. And so your import, you're going to have a very bad import experience if you do this. Okay. If you don't do this. So once you double check this, you just basically check. Okay. So my descriptions are always going to be this. This will be one for each one. But since I use the same description, it's simplifying it for me. Here's where you can actually change. You're like, oh, maybe I don't have stories. I have tasks. Here's where you can actually change that. Same thing with your statuses. You can pick any other status. And then if you wanted to, you can manipulate the titles at this point. But because this all looks great, I'm going to hit the begin import. And now my favorite part of the whole thing is we get paid to watch paint dry. Now, fortunately for me, this import is going to be very, very quick. But most of the time, it takes a few minutes because most of the time I'm importing up to a thousand issues, which is what the limit is. Now, once it's done, I recommend that you right click on this detail log and save it. Oh, and then another tab and save the configuration as well because you want that if you're going to be doing this multiple times. But before you even get off the screen, because we especially want to have this import log, we want to now go and double check our work. So all you got to do is go to your project that you did the import into, go to issues, and you should see your issues right here. So as you can see, 53 to number 60, these are my eight issues that I imported right now. As you can see, the titles came in, the description came in, and the status came in, and the issue type came in because they're all stories. Now, that is just the basics. This is how simple it is to do an import. Now, things get a lot more complicated from here. So again, make sure you drop a like, make sure you subscribe to the channel because I'm gonna be dropping these videos over the next few weeks and things get really interesting and they can get very hairy very, very quickly. So this is like that beginner's one, but more to follow. Anyways, that's it for this video. Hope you enjoyed it. If you did, again, I can't reiterate this enough. Make sure you drop a like, subscribe to the channel, share this video with your coworkers, your peers, your bosses, your Jira admins, whoever you know that's doing imports for you. Share this video with all of them. And most importantly, make sure if you have any questions, comments, or concerns, or you're lost or confused or you messed up somewhere, let me know in the comment section below. I'd love to help you out. Thanks, and I'll see you in the next one. It's only worth it if you work for it. It's only worth it if you work for it. I won't stop till they hear me now